any city and any country. Go to any halfway house or mental institution you can get yourself into and ask to see someone who calls himself the holder of what you seek. This is how most, but not all, of the Holder stories start. Now, if you haven't heard of the Holders, go to theholders.org. Check it out right now if you want. That way you get a little bit of background. But the Holders is a series of stories about objects, 538 objects to be more specific, that have macabre yet magical powers. Now, in order to get one of these objects, you have to go to usually a mental hospital or halfway house, but some other ones do talk about going to places like a gas station, or a library, or even religious institutions as well. Now, when you go there and ask for this particular holder, if you're lucky, or I guess unlucky in some cases, you'll have to go through a series of trials in order to get this object. If you survive, you've acquired an object of magical yet terrifying power. If you fail, you're dead, or sometimes even worse than death. And why am I telling you about the holders? Well, because it is the very first thing that we're trying here at Season 4 of Will It Kill Me? Yes, myself and my crew are back, and we've all, well, actually about three of us have attempted to try to get objects of our own. Now, before I get into uh, the holders that we tried, I wanted to give a big thank you to everyone for keeping with us during our uh, Will It Kill Me hiatus. I especially hope you guys are enjoying the recent Five Nights at Freddy's 3 videos. That game is very scary. I'm going to try to complete Night 5 here. Maybe tonight if I actually have time. We'll see. Uh, but I'd highly recommend it, and damn, he did a really good job on that. I also want to take this moment to thank our very first patron, Adam Gaffney, who has recently decided to contribute to our Lupus Creepus Patreon project. So, thanks a lot, Adam. Your contribution is highly appreciated, and I hope we bring you a lot more great videos. And, well, I think that's really about it. Let's get into it. So, myself, Brittany, and my wife, Becca, also known as Possum Fox, on her own gaming channel, Crickfaced. Be sure to check it out if you haven't have all attempted holders. Now, I'm not going to go through and explain each and every story because they can be quite long and quite in-depth, but if you'd like to read about them, I will put information about them in the description of this video, so please check them out. I happen to be one of the first ones to attempt a holder, and I decided to go for a classic. Holder number one, the holder of the end, that, that takes place in the classic mental institution or halfway house. I did manage to get myself into a halfway house. Now, Brittany decided to do the holder of the story, which involved going to a library and asking the librarian for the holder of the story. And my wife decided to go to the convenience gas station and ask for a pack of cigarettes that might lead her to the holder of ash and smoke. And without further ado, I happen to have my very sneaky glasses camera that allowed me to film in these places. Though I will note, to protect the identities of everybody involved and the locations, faces are blurred and all that, so... Fortunately, I can't show those. But you'll still be able to get to see the reactions and see if we did manage to get ourselves a holder object. Let's find out. Hi. Hi. Um, this is going to sound kind of crazy, but I do have something I'd like to ask you. Uh -huh. uh, I would like to see someone called the Holder of the End. Is that person available? The Holder of the End. I don't know who that is. No idea? No. Well, that's okay. Thank you very much for um, for answering my question. I appreciate you. You have a nice day. All right. You too. Mm -hmm. Hi. 
had a question. Um, I'm looking for the one who calls himself the holder of the stories. Okay. Um, <laughs> you want to have a seat right here and talk to the librarian? Okay. All right. Thank you. Actually, I think I'll just go look around. Sure. Thanks. Uh, Camel 99, please. Uh, regulars, right? The filters? Uh, no, the, 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 the shorter ones, please. Oh, the shorter ones? Oh, cigarette. Lisa Vile and Ashby, so... Just that for you? Yes, please. Right. Can I see your ID real quick, please? Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good night. Me too. Thanks. Well, there you have it. Unfortunately... All three of us did not come back with a holder object, though I guess I consider that a good thing because, in the end, they are not supposed to come together. For if they do, we don't know what exactly will happen, but it's probably bad and apocalyptic. Though, what do we think about this? We think that they're very good stories and a very good world that some has created. It's almost an, an interactive story because people can contribute, add their own stories uh, about seekers or about actual holders and objects. It's a very community-driven setup, and I love that about it, but I believe it's just a story. It does remind me a bit of the SCP uh, collection of creatures and stories there as well. Again, just a community coming together and building upon this really creepy yet interesting world. Very cool, but unfortunately it does not seem to exist in reality. Otherwise, I'd probably be either dead, worse, or have a really cool object to show you guys. Well, that's it for the first episode of Season 4 of Will It Kill Me? I got plenty more coming, and we have some really good ones planned, so keep with us. Also, we got more narrations, we got more Let's Plays, including Five Nights at Freddy's 3, and there's just a lot going on, and I'm really excited to bring it to you guys. So, stick with us. Lupus, out.